right, what's up, fellas? This is Mark Parson, cornerback pro, former NFL cornerback for the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints, and now I'm coaching you guys up. All right, so today we're going to talk about how to defend the double move. Now, this is at the, this is not going to show the very beginning of this play. I got this off my Instagram. You know, really, I don't post much on my Instagram. You can follow me at MarkSteven38, but I'm not going to be posting much. You know, I'll post some funny stuff, some per periodically, but I really do uh, just be on there looking at other people's stuff. So I followed the check down, and they had this clip, and I want to talk about how you guys can do it. Now, this is actually really good. This is really good. I want to show a few things, maybe one thing we can improve, but for the most part, man, this is textbook. So we're not going to be able to read the three or anything like that beginning, but I want to show it to you. So let me go ahead and mute this. All right, so he's playing inside leverage. So the first thing, let's watch it. All right, so my first question is, are you able to look at that and then tell what he did good? Is that are you able to see that, or can and can you explain it? If you can't, then you gotta keep watching my channel so that you can see it, feel it, and know what he did correctly. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you see it one more time, and then we're gonna go over it. I know the guys have been either training with me, right, or you've been watching the channel. You know what he did right at this point. All right, nice. So, what is the most important thing usually in our coverage? Right? What is the most important? You guessed it. At least stand with a guy. Our eyes. So, I can watch this, right? I can watch this play and I can look at his head movement and I can tell that his eyes do not re re leave the the receiver until he's actually touching him, and then he undercuts at the last second. I'm telling you, your eyes are some of the most important things because your body will follow your eyes. So let's watch. This is a double move. It looks like a post corner, okay? That's what it looks like. Now, let's, let's break it down all the way from the beginning, right? So one thing, our pedal, I would say our pedals, well, here's one good thing about our pedal. I, you know me, man. I learned this from Dion. Look, I like movement of our arms. So, like, he he didn't look super stiff with his arms, but I'll just say, you know, move him a little bit. But one great thing about that pedal, notice how he's not, like, in a hurry in his pedal. So, it's not about having a fast back pedal. When I was a kid playing youth football, our coach told us, one of the coaches, and, I, you know, not every, obviously not everybody knows what we're talking about, but I'm a kid, so I'm a, I believe an adult knows what he's talking about. Well, he told us that if you can, whoever can backpedal 15 yards in a certain amount of time, like really fast, then you you can play in the NFL, which has nothing to do with coverage. Some of the best, one of the best cornerbacks that I've been around too was named Jabari Greer. So shout out to Jabari. Man, he never back, he never backpedal fast. It was always a, a controlled, smooth, nice low backpedal, right? Matter of fact, he would turn, he would open up and turn early. You know, it wasn't really, it wasn't about a fast back pedal with him. And that's why he was really good at coverage. Part of the reason. So nice pedal. I would just say move arms a little bit. Now watch this receiver. This is one thing that I noticed as as I was watching this. Watch out when this receiver is about to the cut. Watch what he does. He basically stands up. So receivers, when you're about to make your cuts, understand we're looking at you. <laughs> Well, a good receiver, I mean, a good cornerback, we're watching you. So we can notice those little things where you're about to raise up. So we know you're about to break, you know. So watch him. See how you raised up on that? All right, so good job on the pedal. Nice, smooth back pedal. We see him raise up. Now watch the eyes. So what are most people you think going to do in a double move? It's not about not biting on it, right? You're going to break. You're going to break. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the whole point of us backpedaling. So it's not saying, oh, um, if a guy gets got, oh, he 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 bit on it or he broke. What it really means is he had his eyes in the wrong place because you're going to break. That's natural. But watch how our eyes get us in the perfect position on this uh, double move. So he makes the cut. We cut. Guess what? His eyes did not move. His eyes remain on that receiver. 
So when he made that cut, and the receiver did a good job selling it, I would say. He did a decent job selling this. But his eyes are right there. We're on the upfield shoulder. Then, bam, money. House it. We got house it, though. Let's house it. So look at this. Uh, uh, we own it. So the biggest thing for me is it's not about being in a fast backpedal, being smooth in our backpedal at the very end of this. Obviously, you know, we're not able to see the, if he read the three step and all that good stuff. But it was a, the double move was actually later on in the play anyway. So it's perfect. Right? So we see it, and then when it's time to break, we'll break. But as long as our eyes are on that receiver, glued onto that receiver. So let me go back to the progression before I even say that, finish that statement. When we're playing off man, okay, you're going to read the quarterback drop. Unless you're in the slot, it's a little different. It's a little harder to do that. But let's say you're playing cornerback. You're on the outside. And you read the quarterback's drop. After you read whatever that quarterback's drop is, so let's say this double move right here, post corner. So it's going to be a five-step drop. So I notice that I take my read steps, one, two. Or how are you going to do it? You can do shuffle technique. Two, two shuffle. Doesn't matter. Whatever we're doing, we're playing off man. We read the three. We see that it's a five step. We're in our pedal. Nice, smooth back pedal. He raises up on his, on his uh, route. Okay. We see him. We feel that he's about to break. We break. Bam. But most cornerbacks would have looked immediately at the quarterback as if the quarterback's going to throw us the ball. He's not throwing us the ball. He's throwing the receiver the ball. So rem uh, remember. Let's go back. Do not take your eyes off of the receiver. Now, this takes repetition. This is eye discipline. Okay? Watch. This is good job, man. This is a really good job by this corner. I don't even know who it is. This is a great job by this cornerback. His eye discipline is amazing. And, you, and I had a couple guys in the comments of some videos I did a few months ago. And when you really get really good at this, in your press man, when your eye discipline is on his waist, when you're playing off, when your eye discipline, you're not looking back at the quarterback too early after the receiver gets to the top of his stem, and then you break like this, you're going to be all over those double moves. Because even though you break on the first move, your eyes in the right place, so then you can gather. You can gather your feet and get back to where you need to go. Then you're able to touch him. You're close enough to touch him. And then you make a play on the ball and then house it. House it, baby. You got to score on defense. You're going to help the team out. You want to get recruited? Score. 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 High school guys, play offense and defense. Get the ball in your hand as much as you can. And, and college guys, I recommend if you shoot, if you can do it, be Charles Wilson. <laughs> Charles Wilson, prime time. Who else? Uh, what's, what's played both ways at a high level? I'm not sure. But yeah, man, do it if you can, man. It's gonna it's gonna up your stock. It's gonna up your stock. But that's how you guard a double move. The best, most important thing in a double move is are your eyes. Are your eyes? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? This is great. Let's watch this one more time. Smooth back pedal. We stand low. We are getting nice smooth back pedal. We're not. It's not about back pedaling fast. It's about being under control. The whole point of backpedaling is to, to break up, to, to break. All right, let's watch it one more time. Watch his head. Nope, gotcha. Give me the ball. House it. I can see receiver standing right up. I'm telling you, one of the things, you know, watching receivers train and watching receivers get work, work on, man, you see their coach with – a good coach or their trainer or whatever, man, tell them, man, don't be raising up like that, man. Don't be raising up because you're going to telegraph where you're going to go, what you're going to do. So they talk about staying low and then breaking, you know, whatever they talk about. But it's good to listen in on the receivers uh, practicing and film watching so you can know these things. You can get these little tips. And then you just rep it, rep it, rep it, rep it, rep it. 10,000 reps. And when you rep it, what happens? I hope this becomes second nature. Y'all just listening to me when I say second nature. You know what I'm going to say because it's second nature. Rep it. Rep doing the right things. Perfect practice makes perfect. All right? Make sure you guys email me at cornerbackpro at gmail.com. Ask you for the one-on-one -on -one mastery program so you can learn all the techniques 
improve your skills. And I'm going to include the mind and body training program in there, the catching series from Bill McMullen, BJ Hill kick and pump return series, and the grading scale. That's another thing. I, I really don't really, I haven't really been talking about that. The grading scale is really good. This is why. I want you to know where you are right now. My goal is for you to be elite. If you're elite, you will, you're going to get to the next level. So my goal is for you to be elite. Well, first things first, you need to know where you are right now. And then once you know where you are right now, you need to know the things that you need to be working on to make yourself elite, right? There's certain things you need to, to be practicing and getting better in, in the behaviors. And then what happens is it's like water, man. It just flows. You just do those things with a passion and with high effort and intensity every single day. Guess what happens in like two, two to three months? You locking cats down. You getting scholarships. You balling out. Your confidence high. It's that simple. All right. Hit me up, fellas. Peace.